Welcome everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal. I'm Mike Crowley and I'm joined by Lisa Givalario, the Wayside Youth and Family Support Network. Lisa is also coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Mike. So today, Lisa, we're talking about Rehypnol, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now, Lisa, this is a drug that's used illicitly to uh, incapacitate or assault someone, isn't it? Yes. Um, drugs like Rohypnol and GHB are slipped into a person's drink without their knowledge. And these drugs effectively short circuit the central nervous system. So victims experience extreme drowsiness um, and they may even black out, which of course we know makes giving consent in sexual situations impossible. So the fact that the drink has been tampered with is also really difficult for the person drinking the drink to recognize. So Lisa, you've noted that it's difficult to tell whether a drink has been tampered with. Um, are, there, are there any signs at all uh, if someone is concerned about this? So yes, Mike, there are very subtle signs. So a drink may taste a bit bitter. It may appear foggy. Um, it might have bubbles where it didn't before, and the ice may sink to the bottom of the glass. But these signs, I'm told, are pretty subtle. So, so Lisa, let me ask this. Are there, are there any tools that, that people can use to tell whether a drink has, to test for whether a drink has been um, adulterated or tampered with? There are. So there are wristbands that you can, that you can purchase off the internet and they're called drink check wristbands. And you dab a small amount of the drink on a section of the wristband, wait two minutes, and if it turns, I think it's blue, then the drink has indeed been spiked. So uh, Lisa, from the press re reports, we, we often hear that this is something that happens to, to women and, and there, there has been press about this being a problem in bars and in the Boston area, um, and, and it also happens at parties. But is this something that men need to be concerned about also? Yes, Mike. Uh, men, women, people of all genders need to be really careful and concerned. I think you're right, though, from a statistical standpoint, we have seen reports of it happening more often to women in the past, but it definitely happens to men and, as I said, people of all genders. So um, that's a that's a great segue to my next concern, Lisa, and that's whether you know there are precautions that people can take to prevent this from happening. There are. So the first and foremost precaution is to always keep your drink with you and in your sight. And this is true, by the way, if you're having a, a non-alcoholic beverage. Some people think they just need to be careful with alcoholic beverages, but Ginger ale can be spiked, right? So any drink, keep it in front of you. Also, be very aware of punch bowls and other containers where um, they can be tampered with without your knowledge. When, when the concoction is being mixed, um, something can be slipped into it. Also, we advise people to never accept a drink from someone they don't know well. Um, and also, when you're going out to parties or bars, surround yourself with people you know and trust. This is a protective factor because those people, even if you do take your eye off your drink um, or need to go to the restroom, those you were with will keep an eye on it. And, you know, it just adds to the safety. All right, Lisa. And, and so finally, if someone starts to feel drowsy or, or debilitated in some sense after having a drink, whether it's alcohol or anything, what, what should they do? They should call 911, Mike, and, and they should definitely err on the side of caution. Um, if, they, if they are starting to really feel drowsy and out of it, try to tell someone to call 911 for them and keep them safe um, until 911 arrives. Anything else, Lisa, before we close? Yes, I just want to remind everyone that Rohypnol and GHB are not the only 
drugs that are used to incapacitate. Um, alcohol itself is used to get someone incapacitated and unable to give consent. So just be aware that it's not just what they call being roofied. It's also the fact that, you know, people can be plied with drinks. And then, as I said, giving consent is more murky. In fact, you can't give consent if you are inebriated. Um, and also, just to remind everyone that sexual assault is never the victim's fault, um, even if they willingly drank. Uh, so that's just a good, a good reminder for everyone. All right, well, thank you so much, Lisa. Maintaining awareness about potential tampering of drinks is important for maintaining your safety. So keep that in mind, and we will see you next time. Thank you.